Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve. Make sure to subscribe for more of that. Today we're talking about nodes and what the heck the big deal is. Why in the freaking world would you use nodes when layers work perfectly fine? I'm gonna try to explain my opinion on this using this motion graphic I'm working on. It's just this title that comes up and swooshes around. It's like a little circle. Yeah, neato, huh? Neato, gang. Kind of has this cool little like rotation blur kind of thing. And here is the node graph for all of that, which if you're not familiar with nodes, probably looks like why in the world? Oh goodness, oh no, please, oh no. And I won't say this is simple necessarily, but I wanna show you the power of nodes. We're gonna walk through each part of this composition and I'll show you how this is built with nodes and how it's actually more efficient to do that than with layers. So the first node that we have is a blank background. This is just a black background with the alpha turned down. That just helps us set the composition size and everything. Then we have a merge node, which puts something over something else. The thing we're putting over it is a blue background with a circle mask on it. So here's the mask, and it's just making that blue circle. A lot of the stuff here is just based on this one node, this blue circle. Because the thing about nodes is, unlike a layer that can only go one place in a layer stack, a node can be put in multiple places at once. So the first thing that we're doing is merging this over the background with a mask. See, we have this, these little lines, and that's created with a rectangle mask that's just rotating. So that's an animated mask that's masking that circle to make those little kind of lines fly around. So this is what we got going on so far. We're putting that circle over the background and then masking it with this rectangle. Here's where things get really cool. Let's say we want to do this same thing, but we want these little lines to be white. What you would have to do if you are compositing with layers is duplicate this layer and turn it white and then put it over everything else. So let's try and build this part with layers. Over in After Effects, I have this somewhat built here and we're going to start out with, we can start out with our shape layer. It's just a circle. And then I have a mat that's on top of this that rotates. You could also use a mask right on the layer, but it's easier to rotate things with a separate mat, which is why I use that for this kind of animation. And we have to set this as a track mat, which I'll set here in After Effects. And then that gives us that little animation that we're looking for. So that's great. That's made with two layers, the circle and the mat. Let's say we want a white circle on top of this. What I did was duplicated the circle layer, went into its properties and adjusted the stroke to be white. Then we also have to duplicate the mat and put that on top of it. So we have two separate circle layers and two separate mat layers. Then I've offset these in time, just pushing them down. And if we look at our keyframes, I've kind of sped up the keyframes, which we'll get into that in a little bit. So far, this is four layers for this part of our composition. Right now, it seems like, man, it sure would be a lot easier to make it with layers. It's a lot easier to get your head around. It doesn't look so complicated, right? And that's true. But what about if we want to change something, because even before we get into all of this, we run into some awkwardness. Let's say I want to change how thick this circle is. I can just go to my mask node here and adjust the border width in the inspector. And there I have a thicker circle. The white animation and everything is also thicker. That's because of the way this is set up. Everything that's a circle or masked in this comp is using a common node. It's using this blue background node this right here. And so any changes that I make to this are going to flow to everything that it's connected to. This is going to be super useful in just a second, but let's take a look at doing that with layers. Okay, here I have my circle, and let's say I wanna make the stroke 40 instead. I could do that, but then I have to go and select my other circle and switch that to 40. Not that big of a deal to change a couple layers, right? But it is literally twice the work, which when you get into a really big comp might be frustrating. Let's take a look at our next layer, which is just another blue animation, like blue lines kind of moving around. Here in After Effects, we have another circle, blue lines here, but those aren't thick enough, so we have to go up to stroke and thicken that up. Not that big of a deal, but you know, again, something else we have to do. Um, let's say that we want to change the color of this. We want this to be a green circle instead. I'll have to select my circle layer and go to stroke and we'll turn it green. To make sure that we have the same color, I'm gonna copy and paste this hex code. I'll go over to our next circle, open that up, stroke and paste that hex code. So now I've changed that to green. Had to do that for two layers, that's fine. Over here in the nodes, if I wanna change this to green, I just select the background and make it green and everything changes because it's all using one node. Let's take a look at this other part of the comp. What we're doing is taking our same circle and we're scaling it down a little bit with this node. We're adding some distortion to it like this. 
and then we're blurring it and then we're putting it behind everything else. So to do that with layers, I have another layer behind and this has two effects on it. It has turbulent displace and radial blur. And if I were building this step by step, I wouldn't have to do this, but I do have to change this to that green and also up my stroke in order to keep things looking consistent. So now we have the circle behind the other lines and we also have to take this scale and bring it down a little bit, something like that. And so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, layers for this composition. And now let's say I want to take this and I want it to scale up. So this kind of starts really small and then boom, comes up like that. That's a transform node in Fusion, just animated. Here in After Effects, I made a null object right here and I can parent everything to that null object. And then I can scale it like this and bring it down to zero at the beginning. And we effectively have kind of the same thing happening, right? So that boosts everything up. So now we have that kind of coming up and doing that animation. Some of this isn't eased, but you'll get the idea. So now let's put some text over it. I have some text here, which has the tracking animated. We're just gonna merge that on top of everything else. Get rid of this note, because we don't need it. And there we have our title, right? Not too different in After Effects. Same thing, put the text over it and we have our title. So we're looking at this and it's pretty similar, right? We have 10 layers and over here, we definitely have more than 10 nodes. So if you were looking at just the ease of look at all these nodes versus look at these few layers, you'd probably go, man, layers are so great. The problem is the main factor isn't how many things are on screen. It's how easy they are to use and change and share with other people so it makes sense. If I were to give you a screenshot like this and say, okay, what's happening here? You could guess that there's some circles that are are being matted somehow and there's some text over it looks like things are parented to something that's scaling one of the circles is white but you wouldn't necessarily know that well the smaller circle actually has a couple of effects on it you also probably wouldn't know that these mats are the same exact mat you probably wouldn't know that these circles are all based on the same kind of circle you could look at this parent and link menu and see which ones are going to scale but you kind of have to read through every line and it's really easy to kind of miss a line look over here at the nodes it looks a little confusing at first but really if you take it step by step okay we have a background and something's being merged on top of that it's some kind of background with a mask on it. And that same background and same mask is being used multiple times. One time it's just put over things. Another time it's color corrected before it's put over things. Then it's put over itself again. And then it's changed a little bit. It's transformed. There's some displacement and some blur on it. That's put on top of itself again. And then look at these down here. What's this rectangle mask? Looks like it's masking this circle every time that it's merged over the background. And this is the same mask, but the timing is changing here and here. And once all of that is put together, everything before this is being transformed somehow. And that's all before text goes on top of it and it's rendered. You can tell almost everything that's happening in the composition by just looking at the nodes. Again, if I want to change any of the colors, I just go to the background, boom, change the colors, I'm done, right? It's a little bit harder with our layers, which we've already been through, right? Pink, gotta make sure I copy that and I'll go to our other circle, put that pink stroke in there, this other circle in there, pink stroke. And now we have our colors changed but that was a lot more work, even for a smaller, pretty simple composition like this. Here's where it gets really interesting. Let's say I wanna change this a little more. Maybe I don't want this as thick. I'll just grab the ellipse mask, just bring my border width down, and everything's fixed already. But now maybe I want this to rotate the other way. I'll just go to my rectangle mask and have my angle rotation. I'm just gonna make this minus 270. And now everything's gonna rotate the other way. That might not be something you'd normally change, but stuff like that is no problem, takes two seconds. What if we wanna change those things in the layers? Well, I can bring my stroke back down on this circle and this circle and this circle and this circle. Now let's say I want these all to rotate a different way. I gotta grab all of my mats and I'm gonna change that rotation. So here we'll have negative one. This rotation will have negative one. This rotation will have negative one. Okay, so I've changed all of that. Not terrible, but let's say I work for a couple more hours and then the boss comes in and says, oh, I actually want it to rotate the other way after all. Okay, here in Resolve, my work is done. I'm literally already done. Let's do that same change back with layers. Go to rotation, let's do one. This rotation is gonna be one. This rotation is gonna be one. And there we go three times the work. 
Now, how could we make this faster with layers? Because this isn't the only way to work, right? Well, you could link these up with expressions, but there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, it takes time to link everything with expressions, which you might not have. Then what if you want these to come in at different speeds? That doesn't work because look, all of these are actually rotating at different speeds. What if you want this whole thing to take a little bit longer? Well, you could grab all of the keyframes, hold down Alt and stretch them out like that, and then come in and adjust all of your ins and outs like that, make that work. And that's okay. But with nodes, I can open up my keyframes palette and here we'll just move this animation out. And because I'm only using one animation, it's going to flow down through these time speed things and it's just going to make the entire thing longer. Moving one control versus moving three or four controls. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, this isn't even the most efficient way to work. What you should do is use pre-comps. Okay, we could do that. Later down the line, once I realize that I wanna reuse this circle a lot, I can hit Control Shift C and pre-comp this circle and I'll duplicate it and put this here and I'll duplicate it and put this down here. Of course, I'll need to copy and paste all of my stuff into my new comps. I'll also have to reanimate everything and adjust the timing. Let's see, this white circle, we'll grab that and we can add a color correction effect, like take down the saturation like that. Of course, now we have to offset that. Gotta set my track mats. And now we pretty much have to redo all of our work um, in order to set those up to be duplicates of this. Then we have to grab everything and reparent it to make sure that it's gonna scale right. Set our track mat. Oh yeah, we should have copied our effects because when we delete this layer, it also deletes all the effects. And so now we're about back to where we were. Of course, I still have to animate our transparency again. And actually what we should do is put these mats in the pre-comp. There we go. We turn our track mats off, but oh no, we can't do that because remember our circle comp doesn't have that mat. So we either need to duplicate this so that it's a different circle that doesn't have the mat, or we need to keep the mats in here. So I guess we'll just keep the mats in here. And now if we wanna change the colors, all we have to do is double click on our pre-comp, drill down into that, grab our circle, change our stroke. Let's change that to green. That's awesome, we come back to our pre-comp and there we go. So that might be a little bit more efficient way to do it. But what if we need to change the animation? We have to go back through and change all the mats and go through this whole thing again. You see what I'm saying? As intimidating and complicated as these nodes look, it's really set up to be efficient. You do a few more things on the front end to give you a lot more flexibility later. And you can do things like use a common mask, merge things over themselves, and you can see at a glance exactly what's happening with every single part. Transforming this, putting on a displace, blurring it and putting it behind everything. Whereas here, you don't know what the heck's going on. So there you go, that's nodes versus layers. I hope this has felt like a fair comparison. I've worked quite a bit in After Effects, I've used After Effects for years, and the first time I saw nodes, I thought they were the dumbest thing in the world. But after compositing with nodes for just a little bit, I've noticed the power and the simplicity that you wouldn't think would be there when it comes to using nodes like this. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you wanna learn more about nodes, check out this video right here, this one. This is the one, yeah, nice teaches you all about the basics of this. If you were completely lost, that should give you a nice little, uh, nice little uh, foundation to build off of.